138 million a year would save the system, and we need to talk about that. But let's recognize that this is not uh, a polemic. This is not a, a project in which we've just pointed fingers and said, do this or, or, or just because we say so. We, we talk about how, in some cases, you might want to have a master's bump for somebody who's teaching, say, AP physics, somebody right. who's teaching high school biology and needs to know more about the subject. But if you're teaching kids basic numbers, teaching kids reading, statistically, we found no difference. Now, the problem with saving this 138 million is that there is going to be no reduction in the total budget because of this, no way to move it elsewhere. Why not? Amendment 23 that says you have got to sustain a certain amount of money every year for the education. So right. it's another indication that I Amendment mean, 23 really for, has to go. Before people start switching to the cooking channel, I want to make sure that, that <laughs> they have we, already? we understand what Amendment 23 is and how dangerous it is. It says that as a portion of our budget, basically, education keeps growing year after year after year. Even if no money comes into government, we're still forced to pay it. So I, if we had a real recession, we might find that K-12 through education is 99% of our budget and we can't pay for anything else. Well, and you're yeah, talking but, about but the, the point, fact, the we've point, seen that right. in the past couple recessions where the revenues for the general fund have fallen off, we've seen K through 12 expand anyway, and that means other services, whether it's corrections or anything else, comes under pressure. Which means that sooner or later, and while we keep saying we're going to have to address Tabor, Tabor's the culprit, we've got to stop Tabor, Tabor's been on hiatus for the last five years, and in fact, right now, we're not even hitting close to the Tabor limit. If we've got a budget problem and we find savings in K through 12 education, as you just mentioned, one possible savings, we're not allowed to switch that to the general fund or do anything with it until we fix this constitutional problem called 23. Yeah, now, John, I, I want to move ahead, if I may, because you we put together a wonderful team. We've been talking about this yeah. project, and I've been the one talking about it, but it was a team that did this. It was Linda Gorman who worked on uh, Medicaid, for instance, and Ben DeGroo on education. Uh, former state treasurer, former state senator Mark Hillman did our section on the retirement fund for state employees, for teachers, for lo some local government employees. And he's pointed out something that should alarm everybody who's listening here. Because if you look at the problems that are facing that, we have unfunded liabilities at the state level, just as the federal government has unfunded liabilities for the entitlements, we have something that has got to be addressed because and it's... What you're talking about is the pension program for government workers. Right. Because government workers don't put their money into a 401k program, which is their money, they have a pension program where it's, it's a promise. They have a 401k too right, as but well, but yes, but most of it is most of this it is pension. Most of it is in this pension. So there's a promise, an unfunded promise to pay them in the future. Now, how bad is it? How bad? It's it's somewhere around $40 billion when you look at the whole thing. Now, how much does that mean for yeah, well, a family? I don't know what that means. What is, what is yeah, 40 I've billion? never fallen into yeah. a billion dollars. But to give you a sense, that means that every household that's listening to this program really has a debt that it owes to the state government of $20,000. Just to, just for the pension problem. Just for the pension so problem, every, to every close household, it in the future. Every household right now is really needs to pony up twenty grand in order to pay for the promises of retirement benefits for future re retirees, government retirees. Yeah. Now, now, and, and, unlike, and unlike United Airlines, when they uh, had to file Chapter 11, they could cut those uh, benefits, you know, this is a government. We can go off and tax people instead of going out of business. So this this twenty grand is real. And at some point, it's going to have to cut into the budget, into services now. So if the longer you wait to fix a problem of unfunded liabilities, the worse it gets. One of the things that this legislature has got to grapple with that we talk about in length in the citizens' budget is how do you handle PIRA? What do you do about it? And we've got some very good... Such as effective. What? what do you need to do? What's the, well, what's the solution? One of it is to end what's called the defined contribution so that you say to people, we will promise to give you X number of dollars when you retire and move it into, into a defined, defined benefit. Into a defined benefit. So here's how much you get every year just as part of your normal 
um, but you, I think, you, sw I think you switch that. You want to have a defined contribution. You want to I'm say, sorry, here's, here's the money you give, and instead we're not going to give you a promise for some money later. So in other words, exactly. we're going to stop the wimpy from Popeye. I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today <laughs> stuff. We're going to say, here's your money, and you put it into to an account. It's yours. It's portable. If you leave the government, it follows you, uh, and it, it's, it's yours. Well, and that plus, for instance, changing the date of eligibility, you can retire with full benefits at age 58. Now, to somebody with as much yeah. gray hair as I have, yeah. age 58 doesn't seem I that I old. I remember when that seemed old. <laughs> I remember when that seemed old. And so you, you, can, you can start, you can retire and be eligible at 58. At 58 with full benefits. So uh, if nice. you meet other criteria, you've been working for the government for long enough, you build up the, the uh, promise. If you change that just to match Social Security, then you're saving 300 million a year. So there are all these things, 170 pages worth. Are there, are there any programs that, that just need to be canned? Old age pension, you know where there's only one state. Wait, wait old age, you want, you want to hurt the old? I knew, a, I knew you conservatives were awful. You want to end old age pension, now, what is that? Back in the 30s, a number of states, 36 of them, put together essentially a social security program. Along comes the federal government, sets up a social security program. The rest of the states said, okay, we'll let the feds do it. Now, the Colorado state government is the only one left with its own Social Security program. And what's really amazing about this is you can just move into the state and claim that immediately. You never have to even pay a dime so, into the tax system. So we're giving to get basically it. free Social Security benefits for whoever moves in with our own Social Security system that nobody else in the country has. It'll take That's a constitutional a amendment, but it'll save 105 million a year. Incredible. All right. The Citizen's Budget is available online at the Independence Institute. That's independenceinstitute.org. They can find it there. What are, what are they going to find online? You know, they're going to find some great stuff. They can get the whole thing and download it because uh, we're not charging for it. If they want to look at a particular area, look at only how the budget works or look at only what we've talked about for the old age pension, they can click on that particular one too. Penn, thank you. This is an incredible project. When you hear we've cut to the bone, there's nothing to do, we must raise taxes, you better have this in your hand to say, wait a second, what, what about these questions first? Go to independenceinstitute.org. I'm John Caldera. We'll see you next week.